start the recording. So good afternoon and welcome to our eighth club officer session. My name is Mark Mandel. I'm the program quality director. I'm really excited that you're joining me today. We have had amazing sessions. I will tell you that each of the sessions for the last two weeks have been videoed. And as soon as my son gets back from college this weekend, he's going to upload them to the district YouTube channel and then get them out onto the district website as well, which is Toastmasters D11. Uh, .org, and there's a video library and it will all be there. The biggest question I'm getting is, why aren't we doing the normal boring what to do when you're a club officer training? And I'll, I'll be honest with you, it's a very valid question. The reason we've I've chosen to do things differently is there are millions of videos and, and things out on the on the internet about becoming a president, about becoming the sergeant at arms. But some of the skills that we've talked about this week really lend itself more to you as a club officer. So we've talked about mentoring, which is a big part of it. We've talked about how to have fun at meetings. We talked about what to do if you're in charge of meetings and the rules of order and stuff like that. So I hope you'll bear with me. If you're looking for straight, boring training about what to do when you're a club officer, I will gladly give you those to look at, but I figured that we would really dig it. And so today's session is no exception, and it's going to be pretty interactive as well. So let's start off by just reminding you, if you've not, if you've used Zoom before, fantastic. The thing that we're going to use a lot of today is in the reactions button. So if you go down at the bottom of your screen, there's a reactions button, and um, I'm going to ask you some questions and you'll be able to give me a thumbs up or any type of reaction. And if you have questions, please feel free to stop me. Use the raise your hand or just but or just jump in. And I am happy to answer questions as we go. This session is recorded. I'm going to draw you to some information as well. And we're going to make sure that all of this is out there for you to get hold of if you need to. So today's session is about taking you back to that very first time that you came to a Toastmasters club. We call it moments of truth. So my first question is, just by reactions alone, just tell me, have you ever heard of one of the old legacy programs in Toastmasters called the Successful Club Series? If you have, just give me a reaction so I can see. So I see several people have heard of it. That's a good thing. Not as many hands as I would hope. But the successful club series was created by Toastmasters quite a few years ago and was designed to help club officers to create a, a, an environment where you could look at different elements of the club. Along with that, there is another series called the Better Speaker series that allows you that and takes you through a kind of scripted program of what to do when you want to improve your speaking. So I'll make sure that when I stop talking, I'm going to put those into the chat box for you to look at. If you've never seen them, it's certainly worth going to. This is the successful club series. I've just printed it out um, because what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about moments of truth. Because one of the things that I think is really important is we need to not lose sight of why people come to our meetings. And for me, as a program quality director, in addition to training, I have responsibility to make sure that, that members get their experiences out of Toastmasters. And so I'm hoping in the session today, we'll talk and share and exchange some ideas of what you can do. But let's start off with a little story. I want you to settle back, relax in your chair. Think about the very first time you opened the door and entered the Toastmasters room. Hopefully it was all in person and not by this really unbelievable one by two box that we're all living in now. But hopefully you turned up at a meeting somewhere, you opened the door and you walked in. Because that's the first impression that members get or guests get when they come into your club. 
I'll tell you about my first experience. I was in a Cummins corporate club and we'd got together and we were setting up a club to start a fe- uh, to start opening when I was late. Can you imagine that? I was actually late for a meeting. I come running in. There was 45 people in this conference room. And the first words out of, some, out of the person who was standing up said was, congratulations, Mark, you're the president. I was like, excuse me? The president of what? And that has stuck with me these 19 years as a Toastmaster. But that was my first experience. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is, what is your first experience? So I'd like you to put that in the chat box, or if you want to uh, unmute and, and talk about it, I would love to know what your first experiences are, because that's what we're going to try and capture today. What brought you into the club? How do you feel? And did you go running away afterwards and think, oh, my word, what have I got myself into? So that's where we're going to start. So anybody? Okay, so I see Philip. Hey, That's a good one. Mark. Only gave 15 seconds. Yes, sir. Sorry, this is Jason Tharp. I'm over with the Eli Lilly Corporate Center. Yes, sir. And I'll just say that when I first showed up, I actually went up to the door, looked in through the keyhole, and turned around and started to leave and <laughs> had to overcome that fear before mm-hmm. – taking about 15 or 20 steps away to turn around and come back. So definitely intimidated that first time. Yep. I, you know what? That's an amazing. So we had that actually happen in our uh, corporate club, but in our headquarters, somebody was walking by, heard a round of applause, popped in, and it was, oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. And the guy sat in there for 20 minutes before saying, yeah, this is not what I came for and walked out so you're absolutely right it is terrifying and i see that in the chat box i see people say you know i wonder why they were clapping i wonder what it was it was about uh let's see avi i've never attended an in-person meeting wow that's you know that's kind of scary um i just had an intern leave who worked for me for eight months who said i really wish i'd got to meet everybody and i was like what do you mean? She said, I've never met another Cummins person because I've been virtual the whole time. It's kind of weird. So good. I'm glad. I'm glad that you have that people are chatting, commenting. And and that's what this is about. This is all about us talking and networking. All right. So for those of you that have been to a meeting the first time, what I'd like to know is when you went in, what was the, how was the room set up? Did you see any Toastmasters literature? Was there a banner? What is your setup? Because I've noticed as I've gone and visited meetings, as we get into corporate clubs and stuff like that, we tend to kind of drop the branding piece. I, I sat in on one meeting not so long ago, and as I was looking around at, at people i thought hmm, is this even a toastmasters meeting so let's think about that a little bit what sort of okay so i'm hearing i'm seeing there are banners there are yeah i see somebody say no nope, there's no branding or anything like that and it's really interesting what about moving the room around any of you dare to move a conference room around oh my word you have to take an act of god to do that sometimes in some of my buildings but think about that. It's always, okay, I'm seeing lots of banners and I'm seeing lots of not banners, which is interesting. But that's important. You need to set the scene. And that's a big part of moments of truth. Okay, I'm seeing, so what's all to say? Uh, yes, the banner and all the tools move when you move rooms. Yeah, that's another issue. You don't necessarily always get have the same room. That's a good one. Okay, so so we talk so we're talking about the the thing, and then and then how many of you have table? Do you have table tents or some sort of sticker so you know who people are? Anybody not do that? So Mark, we do. If you'll give me a minute, I'll briefly mm. show a screen of yeah, thank you, Tiffany. Experience, and we mm-hmm. see this as a reminder. So let me know if you can see my screen and see the pictures. Yep. So this Perfect. 
of course, for those in our corporate club in Memphis, this was what Mark originally may have known as the red room, but we've kind of changed the room over years. But this is some of our very beginning stages. So our very first initial meeting, we had not yet received our banner, but we had ordered it. And from there on, we had, of course, our timer cards you'll see here. This was the setup that we used. This is uh, Blaine was our uh, one of our founding sponsors for the club. But just opening up, we actually had our Toastmasters leader club and guests. So that was just some of our beginning stages. And we keep this picture as a reminder of our time in person, as well as, you know, moving around to a virtual environment. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Tiffany. That is a fantastic, and that, you know, I remember, and that's a big part of it. I know it's very difficult in this day and age to have, to have in-person meetings, but I encourage you as you are, as you can get to that, that's a great thing. It is a very different feeling. My community club just discovered that as we went back to in-person, we were very nervous, but 23 people in a room changes that whole dynamic of even speaking to 43 of you in a chat box right now. So well, it is amazing. That, as you share that with us, I would also challenge us, right? So in the areas where we cannot meet virtually, right, for some, you know, mm -hmm reason that's not the option but utilizing our background right so Toastmasters does offer us several features and tools that we can still use to promote uh, our mission our visibility and you know stand on those type of things so there are options I just know for some of us we would love to meet in person that's just not our reality right now we don't know when that would be but to tap into those resources that are available for enhancing our virtual meetings the perspective and the branding of Toastmasters. That's pretty good. In fact, uh, I hate to put Lou on the spot. Lou, do you have any of your Toastmaster backgrounds on your on your laptop there, by any chance? I do, Mark. I have them on my work computer. I'm using my personal one, so I don't know oh, if okay. I have them as okay. as handy. But yeah, the um, same way. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Yeah, you know there there are the timer backgrounds. There are the the Toastmaster backgrounds, and I don't know that I have them associated with this laptop here. Mark, I did have something else to Ooh. share since we were on the topic of Cummins before the everything shut down before uh, the pandemic. I did a uh, demonstration meeting. It's a, a demo meeting, mm -hmm. and we did it at the Carrier, not Carrier Cummins, Indianapolis um, campus. So it's downtown, and I, as the club uh, district's club extension chair. I organized the demonstration meeting at the Cummins Indianapolis, which is a great building for those who are at Cummins and have been there. But inside that, I, I you know, parked there, but I had a box full of all the district supplies. So I had a, a lectern, I had timing lights, I had all of the uh, printouts, uh, the packets that are used for the guests that attended. And it was a full crowd that we had there but instead of name tents because it was just seats in a room uh, we did name tags so that was something that we did for a um, demonstration meeting on what Toastmasters was but that was an example of uh, bringing a meeting to a location we often do that if we have area contests that sort of thing where we're bringing a meeting to whatever location we just have somebody who at the ready has the timing cards or has a banner or if you're saying the pledge a flag handy to be able to use um, i don't know what the came of those uh, members at the cummins indianapolis campus if you're uh, in touch with them maybe invite them to some of the other ones now that we're doing some of the virtual meetings because there was definitely some interest but because things uh, went virtual, we, we didn't get the, the club on, on that campus off the ground. But uh, definitely something where you have to pull together the, the materials for a meeting to an audience that may not be familiar with it. Yep, uh, that's good. I'm glad you mentioned we, we created a very simple card system even for use online. And you can see we have the red, yellow, gr uh, red, yellow, green. We put up an American flag. So it's very easy to, to do this in-house pretty easily. And then also, 
if you want to get sophisticated and in fact in one of our cummins buildings somewhere we have an amazing engineered light system that we put together i have no idea which building it's in even nowadays or where it is but we have it somewhere so you can go crazy online as well as as well as in person but you mentioned one other thing and that was about the literature so again let's use our reactions how many of you have literature and have you made it virtual for your virtual members uh, a guest packet a visitor packet i know uh, going back to tiffany in, in a memphis club they send out a sharepoint that has the um uh, the uh, agenda on it and stuff like that so how many of you guys have that available because that also speaks that tells you you're organized so does anybody have that okay i see a couple of people again which is good if you do if you don't have a guest packet it's certainly something that i would think you should put together and and even even a no, I, I attended a club, uh, a demo club meeting a few weeks ago, and I got a really nice email from them that said, thank you for joining our meeting. And I was like, that's so cool. So that sort of thing is really good. Okay, Sean, thank you for sharing your agenda. That's good. So yeah, if you have if you have an agenda, I think, you know, it's important to get that up. I know when I go to the Memphis club, they pull it up on the screen. And so it's always up there so you can see where you are. Monday night, our VP forgot to print out the agenda. So again, we pulled it up on the screen and it kept us in some semblance of order, which was really good. So all of those create a moment of truth. And Mark, that's- Can I some... interrupt you for a minute? Absolutely, I wanna, I wanna please. I wanna add something to this. So I, I'm VP of our local club and I was Sergeant of Arms last year and transitioning up, I'm an IT guy by trade. So I, I bring in a lot of cool tools. Uh, one of my favorite tools to use is the OWL webcam. If you haven't seen this, look it up. Uh, it's just OWL and it's a really fancy on-one webcam with microphone and speaker. But we also, we've been holding hybrid meetings for, for well, since August with great success. One of the, the challenges that we found was the, the regular lights in person with the, the cameras, the people on the screen can't see them. Mm. So what we do is if there's a, a timer that is in person, I've actually volunteered to put up the, the backgrounds that I, I put in the chat earlier. And then so we have a person doing that, whether it's me or somebody else, that will help the, the in-person person or if they're virtual we'll have somebody run the lights and so that's some of those roles are adapting in our club but it's hybrid meetings are, are so easy if anyone wants to attend one uh that agenda i just put up there everybody's welcome to attend and we're going to continue to be hybrid forever now yeah and thank you thank thanks for sharing that that is a definite big thing it's one of the things that i think that as a corporate club we've had the advantage over some of those community clubs. So I can tell you that I have fancy dancy conference rooms when I can get it, when we can get into them that, you know, have all the bells and whistles for video conferences. We tried to recreate that into our community club and it took some time and effort to figure it out. And we were very hybrid. And now we do have our Zoom link on because we have one member in Missouri and one member in Florida. But other than that, everybody else is in house, but we still take the time to do that, right? And it creates that same feeling that you need when you're trying to offer an experience. And, and I talk about experience. I don't talk about meetings because it really is about what does the member want? What is the member hoping to get out? And as club officers, we have to create that experience. So I'm really glad um that you do that and yeah sean you have somebody in taiwan that uh ifan right so i know he gets up and joins your meetings at ridiculous times of the day um because he does that for us as well so that's a big piece of it um and if you'll just give me one second i've got people panicking because they can't get into the meeting so give me one second to send them the link uh yeah, there we go all right 
Sorry about that. Oh, my word. Okay. Miss Deborah, while Mark is doing that, would you like to share? I see your hand is raised. Thank you, Tiffany. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm mute for us. Um, you would think I would be better at it than this, especially since I've been hybrid ever since 2017. And so. Wow. Yeah, ever since 2017, I've been hybrid. And the first meeting I went to with my club, TLC Toastmasters and Gary, uh, the first time I went into the meeting, went on the campus, went in the room, is that I've learned Valerie Rice is so tall. She's like six feet one. <laughs> I was just amazed. And then when I went in the room, I saw this big screen. It's like, oh my goodness. I can't believe that, you know, I was just on broadcast and this big, you know, in this on this big screen in this classroom. So I was really amazed. But before Zoom came into existence, we started off with um, I was on uh, go to meetings. And so we switched over to Zoom because uh, Zoom just had so many more features that we could take advantage of. So I always like to say, well, uh, the rest of the club joined us because I've been on hybrid for so long, I should be more proficient, but it's no test, you know, it's definitely not a testimony to our president because she is on the ball and she does training sessions and she knows her stuff and she pushes us. She don't, you know, make up too many things. Everything she says, she'll let you know, you go to Toastmasters and this is where we, you know, this is what we are supposed to be doing. And I like that in that, um, you know, the world is not going to give us a break. And Toastmasters and Mark, as you said, we have a responsibility to, you know, help members, you know, learn the right way. And then you can modify from that. So welcome to the hybrid club, rest of you clubs that the pandemic had to send our way or send on this platform. But uh, I love it. And um, and I'm still learning so much. And, and I always say, what a bang for the buck. Breaking barriers, not your budget. For less than you know, $100, you, you just can't beat it. Well, thank you for sharing. And I will encourage you, right? Remember, even our most uh, senior Toastmaster leader find themselves with that of moment or they are, but what? Those are opportunities for us to continue to grow. We're not here to beat ourselves up. I, you know, I, from our president on to you name it, that I've been in Zoom, where we still have to say, hey, you're on, on mute. So it's okay. But again, right, for us, we see those as opportunities to continue to grow, learn, and advance. And then the joy of it, to have fun. We get to laugh together at each other, but enjoy the moment. So Mark, are you ready to proceed? I am. I think I've sorted out my technical issues with people not getting in. All right, so let's keep going. All right. So we've talked about the room ready, um, let me ask you this question, because this is a huge thing for visitors. How many of you plan your meetings in advance so when you show up on the day of your meeting, you don't have half a dozen roles open and you're, you're trying to fill people as they walk in, even before they take their virtual coats off, you're hounding them for, uh, you know, can you take this role on? Oh, does anybody want to speak? How many of you have got that down to fine art? Are you booking a week ahead? Are you booking a month ahead? What you know, because it, it's hard, even in the corporate world, like today I have meetings, but I, I managed to cancel them. But tomorrow, getting, uh, getting out of a meeting to attend a Toastmasters club is going to be really difficult for me. So, what are your experiences about that? Because that also says a huge thing about clubs as well. Mark, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge uh, to get people to sign up for roles. I think one of the reason, reasons we have people sign up for roles is I'm leading by example when we're doing stuff. And if you looked at that, look at that spreadsheet, you're going to see my name in a lot of roles week by mm -hmm. week. I don't like to see, so just like I don't like dead air when people are speaking, I also don't like uh, when roles aren't filled and if there's a role that needs to be filled, there's been times where I've, I know other club members have done this where they filled a couple different roles, but a lot of times we're about a week out from, we start Monday and then we start send emails. We start up Monday and then we'll start Wednesday and see how everything goes. And sometimes 
like two weeks ago, we had our agenda full before Wednesday. But a lot of times it's Thursday evening and our meetings on Friday during lunchtime. So it's it's sometimes a challenge, but that's when you lean on some of the 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 members. And sometimes we have people that, that show up and that had a guy that works for me that was in Toastmasters and Texas and he filled a role without even being a member. So that that's pretty awesome in itself. Excellent. Good. Ebony. I see you have a hand up. I'm sorry. I got my mute off. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> so what we do is we have a spreadsheet in Teams that we use. Um, and we um, have we give all members access to this spreadsheet. They can go in and choose the role that they want. At, at, at the end of a meeting, they don't, uh, we don't, we see that the roles the week after hasn't been chosen. We kind of go through the roles at the end. We leave about 10 minutes at the end and say, hey, we just want to know who wants to be this or who wants to be Toastmaster or, you know, and we encourage people to choose a different role um, each time. Um, and then still, if no one raises their hand, then I kind of go to people individually, but I like to get them feel prior to, I like to get an agenda out the week before um, so that there are there's no scrambling I don't like to scramble um, and, and what it does is it, it creates a, a a synergy that everyone feels comfortable in no one feels rushed no one feels stressed and then I, we get a lot of feedback from new team members that join our meetings and one of the things that they say is oh my god I didn't expect it to be so organized I didn't expect it to um to flow the way it did. So we get a lot of compliments on just taking those little extra steps to making sure that we have all of our roles filled ahead of time. Excellent, good. Uh, Tiffany. So our club it's, it's does somewhat of like uh, the few things that they've mentioned, but we one thing we do is like right after our meeting, um, we have time to sit down and ask folks what, you know, roles they would like to take up or um, pursue. And then for those that weren't there, like th that we still have openings, we'll, you know, touch base with those that um, weren't able to make it in the meeting and fill those spaces. And then um, let's say if God forbid there is still a gap, then we just kind of like try to do it real quick and accommodate those um, spaces um, right before we jump into the meeting. Excellent. And Dominic in the chat box said the same thing. I like what Abhijit said. So he said that their backup plan includes having officers have a pocket speech. Have you ever heard that term before, anybody? Abhiji, you want to talk a little more about that? Yeah, uh, we have this idea which we have been trying to enforce. So usually, let's say if uh, any of the roles are unfilled, uh, those can be filled at the last minute. But let's say if a prepared speaker is unable to attend due to unforeseen circumstances, so all five officers of us have collaborated and try, created a back plan that uh, one of the officers will step in in case the prepared speaker is unable to attend. Yep, and that's a good one. And we, one of the things that as a VPE, as the Vice President of Education, is it's a really good part of your role to start thinking ahead. You know, when you speak to your members, and say, hey, what are your what what do you want to achieve this year? I can tell you that we've struggled a little bit in, in the corporate club, but in our community club, we're doing pretty good at a member saying, yeah, we want to speak every three months, and then we just start slotting them in. And some weeks we have a three meeting speaker, some weeks it may be just one speaker, but I think that's a really good way of doing that, but it never hurts to have a speech in your pocket because you never know when you're going to, when you're going to talk about it. I've told my community club more stuff about what I do at work than, than I tell even my corporate club people because I get to practice speeches on them and that's good for me. I don't know if it's good for them, but they certainly know a, a heck of a lot more about health and safety than they probably should do. <laughs> but there you go. So good. I'm glad that. And, and Lou said, yeah, he has a pocket speech and he delivered it right before this, which is fantastic. But let's talk about that just a little bit more. This week, we had one yet session yesterday and one session last week, and the video, again, will be available, called How to Have Fun at Meetings. Anybody attend that? If so, oh, just show me a reaction that you attended that session. 
So a few people, yep. Yeah. Because I learned so much about different types of, of events you can have. So things like a reverse meeting. I've never heard of a reverse meeting. I've only been in Toastmasters 19 years. I've never heard of a reverse meeting. It's crazy. Um, all table topics meeting. You know, are there things that you can do to just change things up? Uh, yesterday, Scott mentioned a murder mystery. Um, one of the people on the session yesterday talked about a, a game called Kahoot, K-A-H-O-O-T, which I haven't got to look at yet, but it's a, it's almost like a, it looks like a charades type quiz thing. But there are so many opportunities. If you don't have a speaker, you can still have a meeting. And the big goal is, I think that we need to do is to make sure, and I'm coming back to something somebody said right at the beginning in the chat, making sure that everybody gets an opportunity to speak. I can't remember who it was that commented at the beginning, but they said when they, sh they showed up for their first meeting and they only had 15 seconds to speak, which I'm guessing is, hi, my name is, and I'm here, and that was it, and then people clap. So, so think about that. When we think about this member experience, think about how you can stretch things. Our uh, Cummins Columbus Toastmasters Club last week only had three people show up the president who's also the treasurer me and one other person so we did we just did a round topic round topic uh, i think it was trivial pursuit or some you know something like that so what can we do to just change things up just to make it interesting because believe me the word gets out you do something out, out of the box and other people are going to go, oh, man, I wish I was there. Especially if you send an email to all the members and say, hey, we're very really sorry we missed you this week. This is what we did. So what sort of things uh, have you guys tried that's different? Tell me about that. Mark, I'll share one of the things that sure. we do because we – uh, as a corporate club, we have individual clubs, but we've kind of all struggled with mem membership lately. So we found that collaborating, right? So reaching out to the Indy Club, to our Charleston Club, and coming together to have joint meetings um, has been fun and engaging. Also let us uh, network in different ways too, but that's been very fun. Yeah, and that's a great thing. Um, right. Join with other clubs. You know, we, we've got an initiative, we're actually looking at that within the district to say, you know, if you have a club, uh, I'm just going to pick on some people. So I'm not saying it's your club, but let, let me pick Crescent City. Crescent City is sponsoring with, I can't remember which other club, and they're going to try and join together to do meetings uh, together. Because, you know, if you have a club that's got five people and a club that's got three, get people together for a come for from eight, you know, you're going to get more interest. So by all means, feel free to find another club that meets at noon on a Wednesday and join together for a joint meeting. I have this dream, people, just like that March Madness nonsense that they like playing here in Indiana. I want a table topics March Madness where clubs get together and compete to be the best in table topics. I haven't figured out how to do it yet, but I'm working on it when I can. But just think of the fun you guys can have when you come up against another club Maybe all the all the Lafayette clubs get together and do a who's the best in Lafayette challenge or or South Bend, I don't know, Memphis even, you know, just think of that. You can really get out of the box because, as, as Scott said several times this week in some of the sessions, there is no police out there. We want you to follow the rules of Toastmasters, but have fun doing it because that's the way to do it. There you go. I see a challenge from Indie Inspiration. Okay. Let's make it happen, Ebony. So that's what I'm asking for. That's what I'm suggesting you guys do. You have 47 people that you can network with. Believe it or not, I have a list of 761 officers where I'm happy to share your contact information so we can make that happen. Speak to your area directors. You know, we only meet twice a year for contests. This year, the contests are humorous speech and international. But get hold of the area director. Let's see if we can meet more often. 
uh, you know, the idea of building and showing you that you're not alone has got to be good for everybody, got to be good for the member. Okay, so that is that. So we talked about that, we talked about that. Okay, what else? What other, what other things have you tried that you think other people might learn from? Hey, Mark. This yes, is sir. Jason again from the hey. Lilly Corporate Center mm. Club. And one thing that I thought was really terrific that our club did was instead of an all table topics meeting it was actually presented in more of a manner of a political debate where we actually had three or, or four quote candidates that were up front and they each took turns responding to unprepared questions and of course we kept the content much lighter than regular political fare but it was kind of a neat way to both practice the concepts of unprepared table topic speeches, but also to play off of the other kind of candidates or competitors uh, that were a part of the uh, the format. So I thought that one was really neat. That's a great idea. So friends, we're in a safe space. So Alan Shainer, most of you know Alan Shainer is in my club and he has actually challenged us to have a debate in three weeks. I am terrified by the idea of coming up and debating against that guy, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to try a debate on who knows what we're going to end up talking about, but that's a great way because one of the missions of Toastmasters to, is to encourage people to speak in different formats. So we're going to, I don't know what day the day debate is because I'm avoiding getting into that but it's coming and i'll let you know when it happens because we've had debates on what's better m ms or uh, what was it m ms or um whatever the other ones are that are not chocolate we've had some really weird conversations as a club but we are going to do a great debate coming up soon i can tell you that um where was i going with that oh yeah so so that's another fantastic thing to do um so think about it. So tell me, what have you guys tried this out of the box? Okay, we're not having a discussion on candy because now you're making me hungry. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm fine with that because that's another way to, believe me or not, that's another thing that came up in our club. If you feed them, they will come. You ever heard that saying before? And sure enough, it works. I went to an open house at, I think it was Pioneer uh club and they had all sorts of things it was right in the middle of cicada season and so somebody fried up some cicadas which was a little out there but they had so Mark, I, see, I see miss carol has a big smile we'll hear from miss carol and then let's hear from adrian on some go for it adrian oh miss carol first and then adrian. Oh, okay sorry 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 no let's okay. go for it Okay, so a meeting that we had was a rant. So I, I titled it Bully Pulpit, What's on Your Mind? And eight people volunteered. My rules were you had to research your topic so that you could bring in some actual facts as well as your opinion. And then no notes, just open up with something to grab us, enumerate your points and rant on it, and then close it out with something definitive. And eight people really had a good time doing it. We all enjoyed that meeting a lot. Eight five to seven minute rants consumed almost all of the meeting. Oh my word, fantastic. Oh my word, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> I love I'm it. I'm scared you're giving Mark ideas now, Miss Carol, I'm gonna run. Yeah, I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Adrian, will you share with us? Thanks, Miss Carol. Sure, so I'm the, the VP of, of PR for my club. And because we are mostly hybrid, it becomes a little challenge for me to find interesting pictures and things that I can put on our, all of our social media posts. So we've become really good at manipulating the Zoom screen. So if, there's, if I'm handing an award to someone, then, then we have to figure out, okay, if I put the coffee mug this way, and then the person that's right next to me is Ebony. So if Ebony reaches over to, you know, this side. So, so we've come up with all really fun ways of handing each other things through Zoom. And then I post that on our social media. 
I love that. Oh my word, that's giving me more ideas as well. I love that. That's brilliant. Lou. Yeah, Mark, I, we had a meeting. So speaking about candy, I'm not going to give you any um, relief Thank or you. reprieve there. But uh, <laughs> we had a meeting where, um, you know, you can get, get those boxes of candy for like a dollar from mm -hmm. you know, wherever at the store. And so we had uh, be it Milky Way or Skittles or Now and Laters or whatever the case might be. And so for table topics, we had everybody come up, pick what their favorite candy was. And then give a response that was based on whatever type of candy that they gave. So they could talk about the solar system if they put, picked Milky Way. They could talk about things that they found funny for Snickers. And so first come, first serve. So, you know, it got people to do table topics quicker because they knew which piece of candy that they wanted. And uh, we definitely had, and you could take it with you. So, so you got the candy that you spoke about. That's brilliant. That is unbelievable. I've never heard of that. But man, Tiffany, write that down too, please. <laughs> uh, Stephanie, I'm gonna. I was gonna come to you anyway because I'm interested by your comment storytelling. So if you want to go first, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about storytelling because I have some exciting news. Okay. Well, one year when we were still meeting in person, I wrapped a bunch of presents, and in each present was an item that a person had to talk about. And I, I don't know, I almost think I did like a little bag of tea or a thing of hot chocolate or whatever. And then they opened the present and then they had to talk about it. From the standpoint of storytelling, I'm at turning point now and we actually had a storyteller. I think I had posted on the District 11 Facebook we had a storyteller come and actually tell a story and then talk about the things that if you want to be a storyteller, it was an educational session. And then it will probably be followed later with a storytelling event for the members. But there were a number of us taking notes and it was wonderful how the professional storytelling uh, Cha uh, challenges and abilities matched so well with Toastmasters. That is a brilliant idea. So I'm really glad you talked about storytelling because at Fall Education, we did try to have a couple of storytellers come for spring, which I've got to find a way to rename the spring conference, but for the spring conference, which will be in May, I have not one, not two, but three storytellers coming to meet with us. Plus I have somebody from the theater group that is going to talk about getting into character and show us how to do that. I think that storytelling is one of the most underused public speaking skills. And I'm really excited that for spring to be renamed Education Week, we are gonna have storytelling a huge part of that. So I'm really glad you did that. Uh, Lou, I like, I, oh, sorry. I, I yeah. just wanted to toss out that with storytelling, if you've got access to the old Toastmasters manuals, there's an actual storytelling manual. And we also talked about that as we were talking about looking forward to doing the storytelling. That's a, that's a good idea too. And, and it's, it's a great skill. It's one of the, I think it was one of the advanced manuals, wasn't it? It was uh, storytelling, but it's a, it's a skill. It takes time to perfect. Lou? Sorry, I had my hand raised from earlier. I, I didn't, oh, okay. Uh... Put no it down, but I, I do have, I put in the comment, we have Valentine's Day coming up. And mm. so having, in a, even if it's not an in-person meeting, you can have a grab bag of perhaps affirmations, uh, kind of like the candy hearts that have the words on it. You can talk about those as a table topic. You can also uh, have members' names or attendees' names, and you can talk about what you appreciate about that person, what they bring to the club or uh, the, just uh, their personality in general, what what they what you admire about them. That's a great idea too. Um, Todd talked about show and tell. So we have in my community club vineyard, we have an auctioneer, 
who is part of our club and comes periodically. And so every year until last year, everybody would bring, we called it a white elephant. Uh, I'm not sure where the word white elephant comes from, but there you go. So everybody would have to wrap a gift, bring it in. The auctioneer would then auction it off. And then once you got it, you got to unwrap it in front of everybody and then had to do table topics on it. And that was a brilliant way to get, because you never know what what you were getting. It was very weird sometimes. And so that might be a good thing. You know, I know that certainly around our corporate clubs, we have all sorts of junk sitting, not junk, uh, marketing stuff sitting around that you can give to people. And so that's another opportunity. And Todd mentioned that, bring, pe- bring a show and tell in or do something like that. You know, stuff always around. So I like those. Great. Um, okay, so I'm watching the time because I know we only have 10 minutes left. So let me move on a little bit. So we've got great ideas. What I'm asking you to think about now is, as club officers, have you ever sat back and looked at your meeting and really evaluate, how's the meeting going? It's really hard because as a club officer, I know you jump straight in and you're involved but in the moments of truth manual which again is available there's actually a best practice chart and an evaluation form so what we did not so long ago was i invited a guest to come and i said listen here's what you're going to do i don't want you to say anything the whole meeting but i just want you to write everything down how do you how did the meeting go how did you feel and getting that external view was eye-opening to me and so I think that I'd like to challenge you as officers to take the opportunity to either go to your own meeting and do the same thing or in this virtual world join somebody else's meeting and say hey I'd like to just evaluate so I can see what your meeting dynamic is and and it's amazing what you can pick up has anybody ever done that and it doesn't have to be formal have you ever stopped and thought about that? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands. So I would challenge you. That's a way to think about meeting quality. Often as you get more and more engaged in your meetings, and certainly as you become an officer, you kind of lose that, that stuff around the side. And so, you know, when you come in to a meeting and you're the last person in or you're late or you're a guest and you sit at the back and don't say anything, that's a telling thing in the same way that, like I said, somebody said earlier, they got 15 seconds to introduce themselves, but that was it. So think about that in your meetings. How can you bring people in and encourage them to get involved from day one? Even often, they're not sure they want to get involved, but by getting them up and speaking, you're bringing people and engaging them straight away. So think about that. Oh, there was one more item in here. Hang on a second. Here we go. All right. Yeah, so we talked about the evaluation. We talked about, you know, for virtual meetings, it's a little harder because I know I'm sitting here. I've got my TV in the back over there, which is about to have soccer on. So I'm going to be paying a little attention to that this afternoon. I've got my screen over here, which is connected to my work computer, where I can see emails piling up. You know, in the virtual world, it's very interesting. It's very easy to get lost in the moment. And so we've got to find a way to capture people, to have them focus and be part and be fully invested. And I know you've had meetings where it's very obvious that people are not invested. So think about that. So what are some of the ways you can do that? I know within my company, um, I challenged our Cummins Toastmasters Club to use the focus mode in, in Microsoft Teams. We use Microsoft Teams for chat. When you set up the focus mode, it doesn't allow people to email you or it doesn't disturb you, which is a great way to get people to focus on, on what they do. So what sort of things can you do to keep encouraging people, apart from the food bit, which has now made me very hungry? <laughs> so, Deborah. I'm just trying. I remember to unmute myself. Okay. <laughs> Let me take my hand down while I remember. Okay, that's all right. 
but but I know at uh, one of my club meetings, the word of the day is like always an action word. And the last one was like shiver. And so when it was shiver, you know, especially with the, the freeze we're going through all over the country, whenever you said the word of the day, you had to shiver and really move around like you were really cold and, and really took away some of that starch. I've got to say everything correctly, especially since Tiffany and Mark, you guys are so well spoken that when it comes to a word like shiver, you know, fun word, it kind of broke the ice a little bit and made the meeting a, you know, really, really fun. And it also encourages listening skills, which is one that that we really miss out on. I, I that's a brilliant idea. I have a very quick funny story on that. So. A couple of years ago, I decided that whenever we had a new word of the day, I was going to take that back from my meetings and use it during the day, which was fine and dandy until somebody in the club figured that out. And so the words started getting weirder and weirder and weirder. <laughs> and I, I remember going to a meeting with some of the VPs and having to use the word pretentious. And I realized at that time that probably wasn't the greatest thing to do, but it's a skill you should take away with you. A word of the day that you can actually do something with is a brilliant skill. Adrian, I see you have your hand up. Something fun that we've done with word of the day, speaking of word of the day, um, we've come up with nonsensical words that don't mean anything. <laughs> and so then you have to incorporate it into your speaking and then you get judged by how adequately you incorporated it and, and so that we understood what you felt the word meant. So everybody can interpret the word to mean whatever they want, but we have to understand from what they said, what they thought the word meant. I love it. Can you give me an example of one? Cause that is fascinating. Um, I, that's a good one. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I, mean, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but that's a great, I love that idea. Again, Mark, it's all about listening. Yes, sir. Uh, we had that last night at a meeting, we had a table topics where our presenter had a list of 10 words. Uh, we're like Balder, I think Balderdash is a game mm. where it was designed around coming yeah. up with words, but words like Donny Brook, or there was one that was called Petty Fog, uh, Petty, yeah, Petty, something like that. But anyway, it was words that didn't quite have a interpretation. One of them was logaria. And you had to come up with what you thought the definition was, use it in a sentence, and then just, uh, you know, do that within about a minute or so. And it was a lot of fun to be able to hear people's interpretations because it could be different than what you thought. Some people actually looked up the actual definition of words like Donnybrook, but uh, those were interesting ones to hear people say what they thought it meant. Uh, there is an online game. I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. Uh, kind of like Kahoot, but it's it's a trivia-based game where you can mm. come up with definitions and have people guess what they think it is and uh, have points build up. But uh, maybe not necessarily uh, perfect for a, a Toastmaster meeting, but fun at like a team building for work. That's a great, that's a great. And, you know, in this day, and I had, we had this conversation around the dinner table a few nights ago, you know, once upon a time, you had to use an atlas rather than a GPS to get stuff. And we had these things called encyclopedias for you younger people, where you had to actually go and look for information rather than just type it in and find it. The internet is a wealth of places. There are other clubs and other districts that have invented ways to make things easier. Games online, Boulder Dash is a good one, Trivial Pursuit is a good one. I challenge you, go out and find something. You know, I have an app called 365 Table Topics for Everyday Use. And so all that stuff is out there. And that's what it's about, this moment of truth. Go on, Tiff. You'll see my background. This one we had a lot of fun with. It was the uh, participants had to guess the word of the day. Uh, no, I'm blocking it. There's an, <laughs> there is a, a light bulb mm. and there's also a glass. So, you know, they, they had to guess the word of the day. So coming up with, with, you know, what was the word of the day? So they're interesting and very fun things, right? Just figuring out how to think outside the box to bring forth that engagement and participation. So brilliant. Yep. So, and it's all about encouraging 
members and it, and and encouraging having that right environment that moment of truth if you can get people interested and engaged they're going to keep coming back wanting more with or without candy i promise you friends it is 12:55 and i promise that we'd be no more than an hour so that we can get you back to work or as you wish. Can I please remind you, if you haven't gone to the chat box and told me who you are, what club you're with, and what role or roles you're filling, and if you're from outside the district, then I'm really glad to have you here. Just give me your district uh, number as well so I can get hold of your PQD to give you credit. We are going to have a couple of sessions in February that are going to be more drop-in sessions, but training, all club officers have to be trained by the 15th of February. So if you have anybody that has not uh, come through, please let me know. Please look at the district website. It's been wonderful to spend a, an afternoon with you. You've made, given me so many great ideas and made me really hungry as well. So I wish you a fond farewell. Have a wonderful Thursday and we'll talk soon. Thank you for coming. <laughs>